Hello and welcome. Today's date, Friday, 20th day of March 2020. My name is Derek. This is the Money Charts channel. All bets, trades of the like. Well, that's within each's own risk and their own reward. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at uh, a lot of the global markets first and then transition into that of silver and then talk about the bullion market uh, there after that as we are in very volatile interesting times to say the least and uh, without further ado let's get started on the Dow the price has stayed below the 18 average of lows and uh, and of course a major major downtrend it has lost out already a good chunk of its value given back one-third as it's near barely below 30,000 now it's barely below 20 so it's lost about 10 and it has lost more than 10 at one point from of course the highest and lowest point and it wasn't that long ago we were at these all-time highs and then to reach lows not seeing going back what has now been a significant period of time reaching levels seen at the end and earlier 2017 or levels over three years ago and it was just a few weeks ago that we had all-time highs this thing will will calm down at some point but it's either the start of something big which probably might be and something big would mean yep we'll go down to like 15 16 14 12 10 thousand if that happens who knows when we got to get to things like silver how low the price is and what the disconnect within the physical market is going to look like because we're going to show you what it looks like a bit today but i want to go over these other markets very very quickly so let's continue on further and currencies the canadian versus the us 0.69 uh 69 and a half we'll say cents which means uh one uh, Canadian dollar is worth 69 and a half American cents and if you 1x that number it works out to about 1.43 or one you get one US dollar you get a buck 43 Canadian and it is of course in a major major uh, downward move here large large red candle down reaching the lows that occurred uh, at the start of 2016 four year lows along the way and the Australian dollar was in the same sort of deal And it's down to 0.58. So big, big volatility. Now the US dollar index has a interesting monthly chart set up. Currently in at 102.35, but it's an inside month, inside period. This low is low is not seen since, well, really back in like here, say 2018. That's about a year and a half lows. So about, we'll call it a dozen and a half, 16, 17, 18-ish periods. And the high is longer than that for the last time it's seen levels that high. It's going back to, uh, well, well, January of 2017. That's over three years, like 38 months-ish, or exactly it looks like. To me, that just is a setup of something big. Oftentimes, these things can resolve themselves in the path of least resistance or the current trend, which right now is that of higher. And maybe this does have continuation movement this month into the next month, going to like 108, 109. But we're most certainly in large volatile times. Crude oil down to 24.42 and if this if it sounds a little loud we kind of got a don't know if it's hailing or what's it's really bad outside. I probably should stop this because a hydro could go out. Anyway 24 and change and th these are cheap prices. So now that means gas prices that you have that you fill your cars up. It's cheap not like you do much with it these days. Now let's uh, take a look at Amazon and just individual stocks. So which company is going to survive this whole ordeal? Some might be pretty obvious. I think Amazon's the obvious one. But during this run, it's kind of holding in there pretty good. It's, it's just staying within the sideways consolidation for the past, uh, over the last couple of years or so. And if we look at things like, say, well, businesses that you may not do so well moving forward, stuff like travel. Let's see what I can find. I'm looking at something I haven't even looked at. Which one do I want to look? Which one do I want to take a look at? Something big, like Traveler's Company is always big. TRV, I've heard of that. That's the reason why I'm choosing it. Oh, it's getting its ass kicked even more. Oh, I gotcha. And then maybe something like Sporting Goods. Uh, right now, Sporting Goods is uh, booming. Right now, Dick's Sporting Books 
is a, is a business. Yeah, it's a business and it's getting its ass kicked. I understand. Um, and then we got stuff like Kellogg's. I know they sell food. I don't know if people might they'd be wanting that today or not. Maybe. And I, I haven't, oh, they're doing okay. Oh, the volatility. I got the, well, sort of getting, look at this extreme volatility that it's going through. Uh, they're not doing the greatest overall. I mean, they, from, especially from these highs in here. Uh, how about soup companies? Like Campbell's Soup. I've heard of them. Of course. Yeah, they're they're hanging in there. A little choppy with their moves. You can buy low, sell high with this a little bit, but well, when stocks all start to settle in, if stocks are losing thirty percent and Campbell's soup is breaking even. It kind of tells you that it shouldn't be a surprise. Well, that they're doing pretty well. Anyway, I've done enough of this non-silver stuff, and this was just all introductory. Anyway, let's go to the silver market, and it's given a lot back on the day. It was at thirteen near, as we can see here. What was the intraday price? This is uh, thirteen oh one. Yeah, thirteen dollars at one point. And still, with its move to 13, well, well, well shy of the 18 average of lows, that is declining 14 a quarter. It'll, it'll keep going lower and lower, but all that has happened in the last little bit is just stop the decline of all these these large, large, large moves. And a lot of this is all, well, paper derivative, as they call electronic based, I guess is another way of putting it. Break out of the 18 here short term, but it's looking to fail. How do I know that? Well, because it comes down in here, a nice little rally, but it's already showing that this has already failed. Just this rally in here, down in here. So exitation now, the 18 lows showing me this is probably gonna, well, at least come down to here, but the way these markets are going, I, I don't think we've seen anything as of yet. However, how will this disconnect work in the silver? And what I mean by disconnect is these prices within the real physical market. I'll get to that in just a little bit. But before I do that, in the United States point of view, prices are at levels last seen, seen way back when. We're talking of May of uh, 2009. Levels that we'd never even seen during the previous decade at all. Okay. So could it even go lower below? Now a lot of these bullion dealers will simply play the contracts with their inventory. Thus, when they buy silver, they will uh, basically open up a short contract for the silver that they buy, to a position of some sort of mechanism. And then when they sell it to you, they will cover that portion to just handle all of these price moves so that when price goes down like this, they don't get hit on it. Like they are like, okay, well, yeah, we bought silver way back here when it was so much more expensive, like 17 bucks. Now it's 1240. But because we're covering our short end at the other end, we're actually they they make up for the difference there. And plus, when the markets go up and they buy, so say they bought silver here at 14, and then the price goes up to 17, they don't get that big profit that of the price increase because they cover the short at a loss. So it's just a hedge from complete literal literal hedge for that silver and Canadian dollars it is at levels still from the previous decade and we'll say because of US dollar strength slash Canadian weakness but back to these levels in here more important number for now is that it's under $18 an ounce a price it never even seen in such until way back in here at its lowest practically and for me in buying silver, I've been doing a lot of this since the crypto days, but the crypto days start back in 2017. So during none, not a single day in here, was it ever under 18 Canadian. Even though I never bought it in those that currency, I check out with Bitcoin or Litecoin or of the like. And back in here even, well, this was this is the more interesting time I want to go over, which is 20... Oh, um, 2011 at 2010, back when, at 2010, I think this sounds right. Back then I was buying meeples and eagles for 25 Canadian. The cheaper stuff or the more generic stuff, we'll call it 22, 23 when I can get a hold of it. 
And it was during this little run here. So prices were generally like in the $18, $19 range. Right now, silver's under 18 Canadian, which, which meant it's cheaper than it was during this entire long, long run that I was waiting. It was like, and then the breakout. I mean, when is this thing going to break out? And then, of course, it did here. Failed breakout, at least for now. Well, this one was failed, and the next one will, will occur. To me, it's almost a guarantee, as I've mentioned, with that, that silver, the safe, putting gold, silver, pr precious, or, yeah, precious metals, that's what they are, cryptocurrencies, fiat currencies, how this, to me, is the best, the best I think I could find. The only thing I find to be, a quote-unquote, guaranteed to at least not lose all its value or majority of its value. So, therefore... $17.80. Let's take a look at another website, silvergoldbull.ca, and they're not advertising in any means. It's just since I've been buying on the internet, that's the only, during this entire run, that's the only place I've bought from is them. So uh, it's because of that's who I deal with, that's who I know, that's who I'm going to show. And on their website, they're saying, due to unprecedented order volumes, Please expect a shipping delay of 20 plus business days. We appreciate your understanding, which is that of a month. I don't know how much of it is there. It says here like Sunshine Mint in stock and shipping. See, that's a big thing. The fact, hey, we're shipping this item. Normally that's an adjective or an extra feature. They shouldn't have to tell you. But... The fact that they're able to sh oh, you're, oh, you're able to send it to me now. That that's, that's a good thing to have that you might not be aware of or expecting. And that would be one of my common questions if, of course, I was to consider buying. Today, of course. $236 for a 10-ounce pure soda bar. That's $23.60. If you buy 20 of them, which means you're buying 200 ounces, you're doing $22.75 an ounce. A two ounce Royal Canadian Mint Police Silver Coin, $55. That works out to about under $28 per ounce. One ounce assorted silver round, $23.47. Ten of them, $23.14. I don't know if they're going to come immediate. I don't know how long they take. If you buy 20, you're not going to get any cases. They don't cost that much. You should be able to buy them on almost every site because they just throw their, they just put their inventory in a little space and sell it to you for cheap. Like, a dollar but the sunshine mints are like 25 and a quarter 24 12 if you buy 20 I'm just, I'm, when you look at this big big difference buying 20 I think is a much better deal uh, the one ounce random American silver eagles $30 and it was like 31 and change earlier in the day this, this thing has went down on the premium spot it's still bad enough $18 silver is and then it's, it's, there's going to be a shipping delay on this too when you have to wait like 20 business days to get it. And you're not even going to find a, a random year for the Canadian Maple Leaf. You're not going to find the 20, uh, 20s or the 2019, 2018 coins. No. They don't have them available. You're going to get like the one and a half ounce, maybe half ounce, and the, uh, the, the animal coins, the privy coins and stuff like that. And But you're, you're not going to get anything of uh, of that type of nature. So you just can't even get it. Then the prices, back in those days when I was buying silver and they were a little more expensive than this, I was buying maples and eagles easily for 25 and I was buying the other stuff for 23. It's not the prices anymore. I mean the generic. So here's 150, the uh, canoe year. 150 years, $28 for one of them. $2.80 more than what I was normally paying. Uh, Sunshine Mint walking literally. I mean, this is just a, a generic coin, 25 and a quarter. Really? Uh, yeah, $23 for stuff. That's pretty much what I spent 22 to 23 for that type of stuff back then. And you're spending $24.12 for an $18 coin. That's over $6 on 18. That's 33 plus percent premium on Sunshine Mint. So that's just crazy. I'm finished now with the silver part. Let's just quickly go over the two markets I meant to, three I suppose, that I meant to show that I haven't yet. One being gold against the US dollar. 
which uh, hasn't been getting hit quite as hard and really still holding the gains from the previous year pretty good. But this gold and silver market with, uh, and the whole reason I think for, or the whole, for the reason they're going to state for why this is going to go up is because of the current pandemic situation going on now. But because of that situation and everything else, all the technical indicators I've been saying for months and months that this gold looks like it's going to go off Well, that time frame or the you-know-what hitting the fan seems to be in play. And, and it, it, it does, I mean, whether we have any more deflationary moves, because I mentioned stock market, well, that can go down to like 12, 8,000 or whatever. If that's the case, maybe this goes down to 1,300 and it has a little pit stop there before the way up. Maybe, I don't know. Same thing, of course, with silver. They could have those cheap moves. But prices, if you're just getting into this, just trying to figure out, man, I, I want to get in. And oftentimes, there could be bad luck for that person. I wanted to get in. I learned about it, and silver was 100 bucks an ounce. No, it's not. Or gold was $5,000 an ounce. No, it's not. Bitcoin, finish that off. It's got to the day 18 uh, average, so it's in the correctionary mode. Stabilization. If it can hold in a range of 5,600 dump change up to 71, then that'll be neutral. The band will be flat. And in today's session, you're going to see how it just... A nice little rally, fast. 62 up to 71, but now starting to pull back. This is the free market. We'll see how this plays during these types of times. I've never ever seen a free market play during a major economic crisis situations. But I am now. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.